Welcome back, my name is Kami, and this is my guide for Eden Turn 2 Savage. Once again, the callouts will be on the left. The first mechanic is Doom Void Cleaver. Each party member needs an assigned spot around the boss, and will get hit by a cone attack that spawns an ad behind them. Don't be too close to the other party members, or you will get clipped by their cone attack. This next mechanic is Unholy Darkness. Make sure you stack behind the boss to mitigate the stack damage. Everyone except main tank needs to stack. This next mechanic is Doom Void Guillotine or Slicer. Guillotine you get to the sides and dodge the adds. Slicer you get underneath the boss and dodge the adds. For this next mechanic, four players will get marked with Dark Fire 3. If you get a Dark Fire 3 marker, just take it away and spread. Soon, eight puddles will spawn in set locations around the arena. Each player needs to have an assigned spot to which puddle they're going to be standing in. While standing in these puddles, they will apply a small dot bleed on the player. This next phase coming up, I like to call the timer phase. A stack timer will appear on a random player. They will stack behind the boss. The next mechanic will be five marker timers on random players. Now we get ready for the final timer, the Shadow Eye timer. The only person that gets this is the person that doesn't have a timer, besides the main tank. The Shadow Eye timer player will stack behind the stack timer player. Now it's time to play the timer game. The five marker timers are going off now. Now they must stack with the stack timer. Once stacked with the group, two players will get prey. Take it away from the stack timer group. Once preys get away, preys will be going off. Stack Timer and Shadow Eye Timer are all going off. Make sure to be looking away from the Shadow Eye Timer play. The next mechanic will be Shadow Flame. It's a tank buster on both tanks. A great tip to know is after every tank buster, there's always an AoE called Entropy. Now get ready for the hand to spawn. Check the tether on the hand. If it's red, it's a getaway hand. If it's purple, it's a knockback hand. During this first phase, it's always a getaway hand. Now the party is getting ready for another Doom Void guillotine. You always want to be on the sides, and then you just dodge the adds. Make your way toward the center for the next mechanic, which is the Doom Void Slicer. You want to be underneath the boss at this point while dodging the adds next. After dodging the adds, get ready for the knockback. Make sure you use your not back prevention skill. After that, the main tank wants to pull the boss back to the center for another Doom Void Cleaver. Make sure you get to your assigned spots around the boss for the cone attack and make sure to dodge the adds that spawn behind you. The boss will now be casting the next mechanic, Shadow Flame Tank Buster on both tanks once again. As always, after every tank buster, there's always an AoE, Entropy. Now, get ready for another set of timers. Two prey timers will spawn soon. Shortly after, the boss will be casting Hellwind. It's three flares. It's always on one tank, one healer, and one DPS. If the flare happens to be on your main tank, make sure the off tank vokes to keep the boss in the same position where it's at. The three flares need to get away fast, and they need to have an assigned spot in each corner. The next mechanic is another Shadow Eye timer. Plus, purple puddles. Once again, make sure everyone has an assigned purple puddle spot. The two prey timers will be going off first. The healers need to heal them up before they stand in their purple puddle or else they'll die to the small bleed. The shadow eye timer will be going off. Make sure all members are looking away from that shadow eye timer player. The next mechanic going out will be the shadow flame tank buster on both tanks. Remember, there's always an AoE after this. Entropy. After the AoE, all players need to have an assigned partner for purple and white puddles. Stack on your partner until the puddles disappear. Immediately after, players need to get to their assigned spot for Doom Void Cleaver for the cone attack on each player while dodging the adds shortly after. Shortly after this, all players need to stack up behind the boss for the stack mechanic except for the main tank. 
The next mechanic is Doom Void Guillotine or Slicer. Guillotine, you get to the sides and dodge the adds. Slicer, you get underneath and dodge the adds. Now once again, get ready for the Shadow Flame Tank Buster on both tanks, followed by another AoE, Entropy. Now we must get ready for timers once again. Get ready for three flare timers to go out shortly. These timers won't go off for a very long time. Watch out for the hand as well. It might be a getaway or a knockback hand. Remember, if the hand tether is red, it's getaway. If it's purple, it's knockback. In my clear video, the hand tether is purple, so this is the knockback hand. The next timer going out will be the stack timer. This won't be going off for a while. Now, as you see, we're giving mitigation before we spread for our flares. My flare currently has 9 seconds on it. We're going to go ahead and spread out now. As the new flares get to their corners, a new set of flare timers will spawn with the stack timer player. They stay where they are and mitigate the stack damage. The rest of the players will run in and stack as well to mitigate damage. And like always, during these flares, if the main tank has a flare, make sure the off tank folks off them. You're trying to keep the boss in the center for your DPS. The next mechanic is a Shadow Flame Tank Buster on both tanks. And remember DPS, if you ever find an opening to LB3 during this part, do it. This is a hard DPS check fight. Now the party must get ready for two Shadow Eye Timers. If you're a melee with a Shadow Eye Timer, you can sort of stay on the boss, just make sure you're behind your party before the Shadow Eye Timer goes off. Flare timers are about to go off shortly, they need to go to their assigned spots. Everyone needs to look away from the Shadow Eye Timers. As the three flare timers go off, there will be three marker timers on the people near the boss. Please avoid those players and make sure they spread out. The next mechanic is the purple and white puddles. Make sure to get with your partners fast. After this, you need to go to your assigned purple puddle spot. Like always, it's very important for both tanks to keep the boss in the center of the arena this whole time. Another Doom Void Cleaver will go out. Make sure to be in your assigned spots for the cone attack and dodging the adds shortly after. Now, the tanks must get ready for the last Shadow Flame Tank Buster in this fight. Make sure to give mitigation, and make sure to get ready for the AoE after it. The AoE that happens after the Tank Buster is called Quietus. It does massive damage and needs to be mitigated, and it even gives the boss a stacking damage up buff. I judge fights based on percents, so if you want to clear this fight, you need this boss at 20% before the first Quietus goes out. The next mechanic going out shortly will either be Cycle of Retribution or Cycle of Chaos. If it's Retribution, all players will get under the boss, then getting to their assigned spots under the boss without hitting each other with their cone attack. Then immediately all players will get away from the boss and be on the sides to avoid the cleave from the front and back of the boss. While dodging all these adds, and make sure not to get clipped by an ad because they do give damage down. The next mechanic will be opposite of what the boss just did, so if he did Retribution first, he'll do Chaos next. For Chaos, all players need to be on the side of the boss to avoid the front and back cleave. Then immediately get under the boss and avoid the adds. Immediately after that, make sure you get to your assigned spot around the boss to get hit by the cone attack. Try not to clip your party member and avoid the adds. Now the party must get ready for another Quietus AoE. Remember, the boss will be getting a damage up buff as well. Now you're almost at the home stretch. Get ready for the final few mechanics. It's either going to be Retribution or Chaos. Get ready for the last few quietest AoEs right before the Heart and Rage. As always, make sure to give enough mitigation for the damage. Reprisal, Heart of Light, Divine Bell, anything.
Alright guys, this is the Heart and Rage. Again, if you want to know more about my callouts or anything like that, they'll be posted in the description below. Anyways, I hope this video has helped out anyone that is stuck on this fight or just struggling in general. And if you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, just post them in the comments below. Thank you guys, and take care.